I'm going to comb my hair while I wait. I'm doing that right now. Sit with my hands. I don't use a comb. You can be a real man. Come on. I use a comb because that's the only way to get out the hair that's fallen out. Otherwise, your hair will just start falling in your food and stuff. Alright. I just use my hands. Like a fucking caveman. What, you like pull your hair until the, the ones that have came out come out? Yeah. <laughs> and then you just drop it on the floor or something? No, I drop it in like a fucking bowl or something. A hair bowl? What the fuck? <laughs> it's disgusting. It's only because I use it to like put my spoon on it so that coffee doesn't go on the like the, the table, so I just fucking put hair in it if I have But you've to. got a fucking cum box as well, like there's faggots on Reddit. What the fuck? <laughs> cum box? Have you not seen that? What is a cum box? Is that like oh an empty god. Kleenex box or something? What the fuck? I don't know what it was, oh my god. Oh, oh that should be the start of our episode. <laughs> <laughs> What? Alright, go, start. That's the start of my episode. Go. Alright. Cool. <laughs> fuck. I can box. Yeah, you've. Yeah, I need it's... to find out what that is now. No, I don't do it. Okay, okay. Right, don't. Fuck it. Fuck it. You're not allowed to know. No, I'm fucking starting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll bask in my ignorance. Yep. <laughs> right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the currently untitled podcast with myself, Cosmic Contrarian, and my friend, Volans. Yo, yo, what's poppin', nigga? What's poppin', nigga? (laughs) We're in episode 7, so if you want to see the previous episodes, there's a link to the playlist in the description, along with Senor Volans' channel. Uh, In today's episode, we're going to be covering games, mostly what we've been playing and games that are coming up that we are anticipating if there's a game that you know of that we do not bring up, let us know because hell, we we'll probably play it. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, basically we're going to be talking about that, but first we need to talk about Rome Two and the tournament which you you came second in. Yeah. So uh, let us know about that. Where did you finish? Where did you place? <laughs> I was last. <laughs> <laughs> you were in joint last place. <laughs> yeah. I started, I started the battle and I was like really nervous and I wasn't meant to um, I wasn't meant to be streaming like I was the guy on the stream losing pathetically and not knowing what I was doing uh, um, but I basically I wasn't meant to go first and you should never really go first for anything but I wasn't thinking because it was it's weird like it's hard to explain because you're not the person who was there and was at like you know experiencing it but there was this big rush I didn't really know what to expect I'm the opposite. Um, I always go first whenever I can. Holy shit. That's how you do it, man. I'll let some other guy have a go and then get like destroyed first and then I'll know what to do. Bro, be a pioneer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be a oh. Columbus. Be hey, a Columbus, fucking right brother. Columbus wasn't first. Shut up. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first at something. I don't know what. Oh, but yeah, um... We practiced a lot for tournament and made builds together. Uh, I let everyone down, including myself, but yeah. Uh, move on, please. Don't make me cry. I'm going to play the world's <laughs> smallest violin, then we can move on. Okay. Uh, and I can do that because I finished second place, which is pretty good, I think. It's, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pleased with that. I would have finished third if I hadn't been nervous. Yeah, you actually would because you had just as much game knowledge as I did heading into the tournament, and that was probably the most important thing. Yeah, having the correct builds and knowing what works and what doesn't. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of you guys were there uh, watching that live, which was pretty cool. We both linked it on Facebook, and some of you even made it there, and like you were in the chat and stuff, and I was reading the comments as well. So whenever there's a tournament in the future, we're both going to try and opt into that, like a, a big tournament, like a one that's endorsed by CA and has a, a prize yeah. pool, that kind of thing. Because we we've got a lot of stuff to do, so we can't really opt into like many tournaments. Uh, uh, public tournaments, that kind of thing, you know, beta flash tournaments. Time is money, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. And we don't have much of that, considering that next month is November. You know what that means, right? All the all the games for Christmas and all that stuff are coming out. All those massive games, including like all the consoles and stuff, are coming out. It's going to be nuts. Yeah, we would opt into tournaments at every opportunity if the game was actually good, and that that's a good way to transition yeah. into the next topic. 
Rome 2, it's not really good enough to play that much. I don't feel that way anyway. Um, I, I was some. I was planning on stopping the stop, stopping playing Rome 2 before the tournament. Like, do you remember that? So was I. Yeah, I was, and then the tournament came up. I was like, okay, this will be like my last, uh, last foray into this crap game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, the first, my initial reaction was, how the fuck can we have a tournament on a broken game? That was actually genuinely my reaction. Yeah, and that was the reaction of a lot of people on like Facebook when uh, the Total War Facebook page announced the tournament. Like half the comments, yeah. everyone. I think a lot of the people who listen to this know on Facebook on Total War's page on on YouTube on Total War's channel. It's just just pure rage, uncontrolled <laughs> fury, just everywhere, uh, and that that reflects uh, the state of the game. Really, uh, it's quite yeah. a mess. I, what annoys me most, though, I'm just gonna bring this up anyway. Like the people on Facebook who say that. The Nomad Pack is free, and you're still complaining and stuff. You have to buy a broken game to get it for free for start, so it's not free. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, the problems with the game Jesus. are much bigger than what could be solved by a free DLC. It's You still have all of the problems, but just with different factions. That's it. Like, it's mm-hmm. still broken, pretty much. Yeah. Um, co-op has a bomb timer. Uh, <laughs> it'll, it, the AI is broken in co-op. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, we should we should cover yeah. that again. We've already yeah. reiterated this ad nauseum all over the place, but the fucking game, the AI and Rome 2 is, it's just, it's abject. It's, I, can't, I can't think of a word to describe how bad it is. Uh, it was like that on day one when we first played the game. We, we went into the game really excited, and yeah. that was like the first indication of what a letdown it was going to be. The AI did exactly what it did the last time we tried to play. It did nothing, it just sat there and let us take the flag, so yeah, the AI's broken. And that's been hanging over me since day one, really, how bad the AI is. Uh, no matter how much the game is repaired, it's, I'm still going to have this feeling of dread. And Yeah, same. That, that, yeah, the game has just been... Even if they fix it and it's the game we all want it to be, it's, it's still going to hang over me and annoy me. It still how broken it was. It still won't be an exceptional game. It still will not be, like, the game it needs to be. Yeah. Rome 2 is not the hero we deserve and we don't want it right now. <laughs> yeah, like, I could just... I could keep like, trying. Jesus. Wait, that's uh, something that I was asked. Like, what motivation do we have to continue playing Rome 2? And yeah. honestly, it's just, like, the demand for it. Like, I don't want to play it. Uh, I would... I would. Okay, I would still be playing Rome 2 if I was, like, a fucking money-grubbing view whore, but I'm not, and I'm not playing it, so fuck off. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's. I don't think you're saying fuck off to everyone. No, no, I'm just saying fuck off. No, I don't mean fuck off to people who want it. Like when every time I see more Mastodon campaign, oh, this campaign's great. More cosmic, more, and I'm just like, the game's broken. Don't hit me. <laughs> don't, don't hit me. me, please. Don't hit me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how I feel. Like when I get a request for like the Egypt campaign, which I I kind of liked at the start, but then. It just it started to catch up with me how bad the game was, and I just didn't feel any motivation to play it. Yeah, I still get requests to this day, and I just I could play it. Obviously, I could just load up the game and start playing and record it, but I would have no enthusiasm, and it would show. That's yeah. I decided. I think both of us decided quite early on in our when we made our channels and started uploading uh, lots of stuff to YouTube. We decided that we wouldn't play anything unless we actually wanted to play it, because otherwise you're basically just a slave. Uh, and it, it, yeah, and you can't be in any state of mind Otherwise other than happy and motivated a, while you're recording something. Yeah, it becomes a job if you uh, don't want to play the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I don't want a job. Thanks. <coughs> mm. Honestly, I'd rather be like really poor and just do what I enjoy. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, it doesn't. Rome Two does not have what Rome Total War had, which was so. Not, even though I hate that word. Yeah, like, the first time I saw that game, it was back when it first came out, and my cousin was playing it on his computer, and I I, I was just like, what the hell is that? Because <laughs> I was seeing guys running around in the battlefield in amazing graphics at the time. And yeah. uh, I'd seen the TV show, but I didn't know what the game was, and he was playing it, and I was like, dude... Time Commanders, you this, mean? This is awesome. Yeah, I watched Time Commanders before it, yeah. Yeah, just to clarify for anyone. Yeah, Time Commanders, it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, I pushed him off. I pretty much bullied him off his own computer. Uh, <laughs> I started playing as the Brutei and destroying people when he was watching me play on his fucking computer. 
So that was your first experience with Rome with with Total War? It looked so good that I pushed someone off of their own computer to play it. That was your first experience with Total War in the whole? Yeah, yeah. All right, for me it was uh, back in the... Back when the demo of the first game came out, like I used to get those. I don't know how many out there used to get those magazines oh. for PCs where it had demo CDs on them. Oh, good times! Uh, yeah, so you you basically had to you could go through like all the because every game back then just seemed to be really oh, good. Man. I I used to like look at the magazine and then it had a demo and I'd think, hmm, fifteen pounds. Don't think so. I'll just take the demo and steal it. <laughs> what? What did, what did you just say? You know how you, you know how you get game magazines and then have demos like you said. Mm-hmm. And then the price is like fifteen pounds, and when you're kids, that's a lot of money. Oh yeah, it's loads. And I'm like, Mum, can you buy the magazine? She's like, No, no enough money to do you. <laughs> and then I'm like, Shit, I want to play it. And then I just, I just literally rip it open, take the demo, put it in my pocket, walk out. <laughs> okay, so the police are going to be at Cosmic Katrin's door tomorrow if he's not uh, uploading videos. That's why. <laughs> it's funny because game demos are free now. We've got a confession, everyone. So I was ahead of the times, guys. That guy that owned that store where the demo series went missing. <laughs> We've got a confession. We've nailed him. Let's get him. <laughs> oh my god. I hate that. They, they make you buy the fucking thing just to get a demo. No, I'm not paying for a demo. Yeah, because there was no, no internet back then. Like, you couldn't just download demos. <clears throat> even, back, even back then, I was like just anti-bullshit. Like, I'm not paying for this. It's a demo. <laughs> for fuck. Yeah, it's like the definition of a fucking demo demonstration. <clears throat> it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a preview, god damn it. Yeah. Pays for a preview. No one. Yeah. Oh Although, to be fair, you were paying for the magazine as well, which is probably what mm-hmm. was most of the value. You could just read it in the shop, though. Like, that's what I used to do as well. I just flipped yeah. through it. Yeah, but then it's like those comedies where the guy gets the magazine in the shop and he gets, he gets kicked out. Alright, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you got hide. Pretend you're about to buy it. And then you just... take the magazine, then walk away to like the frozen food section, open a freezer, and then put the magazine in the freezer and just look in it. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> That's the kind of shit I used to do. My mum was just so stingy. I spent all my money in sweets so I couldn't get magazines like that and I just do that. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Yeah, we spent too long in that. So, yeah, Rome, Rome 2 does not have the splendour of Rome 1. There's no way I would push someone off their own computer to play it. Um, yeah, so we we played Rome 2 for nearly two months uh, and yeah. uh, we've kind of lost hope. I've like played it for over 200 hours. I think yeah. I have as well. Just uh, just let you guys know. <laughs> yeah, it's not like we didn't give it a chance. We were yeah. more excited for this game than absolutely anyone. Seriously. <clears throat> yeah. Well, like I said on my Facebook as well, it needed to be a good game. Because the consoles are coming, which means there's like a big... There's going to be like a, a mass big leap forward. exodus. Like everyone's... No. Everyone on PC is going to like... Not everyone, but a lot of people who would who would normally be playing Rome 2 are going to go and get like a, an Xbox One or a PS4. And just buy the games for that. Or even get a Steam box. They're not mm-hmm. going to sit and play Rome 2 when that shit's coming out. No way. No. And GTA 5 came out as well. To make things worse. Like, that... No, I'm not, I'd rather play GTA 5 even if it is on a console in Rome 2, honestly. <laughs> yeah. When once Battlefield 4 comes out, that's pretty much it for me, I think. Yeah. Battlefield 4's coming. Oh, fuck yeah. A few days to go. <laughs> Two days North America. Four days for the rest of the world. <laughs> oh man I can't wait for all the maps because we've only had one so far oh yeah the Siege of Shanghai map yeah I used to play Battlefield 2 all the time oh. yeah me too it's great Karkand right, uh, amazing yeah Wake Islands <laughs> oh yeah there's more there's ones I'm forgetting I, I can nostalgize like this for the original Rome as well, but Battlefield Two. Yeah. I mean, Rome Two. I've got absolutely no memories of that I can. Yeah, I'm worried about the franchise. I think it might go under. <laughs> yeah, it's sad because that's like what we were sort of focusing on to war. We should wrap this up now. Like, I'm, I'm, I don't want to really. I mean, talk Nomad, about Rome Two. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the fail of Rome Two. It's mm-hmm. depressing. But the the Nomad DLCs out and all that shit, and it's uh, it's free if you download it within a specific time zone, which is bullshit. Mm-hmm. Can I just say it's bullshit? Why is it free now and not free like the day after? What? Why not just make it free? It's yeah. like a feigned attempt at saying we love you guys, but we're not gonna make it free all the time. Um, yeah, and you have to still play as you still have to pay to play as Sparta and all that. That's for the for the Greek states one as well. Uh, yeah, it's not cool. That's not cool. I hate I hate DLC honestly. 
I hate DLC as well. Um, do not pre-order games. Do not buy season packs. Uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do those things. Don't do those things unless you have a YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, because then it's different. It's totally different. Yeah, you're operating on a time zone, a time window, uh, that kind of thing. But if you're just like, if you're a casual gamer, which is pretty much what we would be if we didn't have YouTube channels, you you should just. Yeah. N- I don't think casual is the right word. If you if you're a if you're just someone who enjoys games but has no reason to. Um, get a game on day one. Yeah, then you're okay. Yeah, don't pre-order. Pre-ordering is is horrible. Yeah, and and like you said, bad. DLC. Like I I I hated DLC from the first. I think the first DLC was the maps for Call of Duty Four. That was the first time I came yeah, across DLC. I think that was the same for me. And it just reeks of complete bullshit for me right away. Yeah, I have to buy these maps, but I've already got the game. What? Yeah, buying maps. I mean, it's not even like it's a substantial addition to the game. It's just a fucking... It's, it's like a, a different sandbox to run around in. It's, why would you pay for that? You know when DLC was good? When we had it, when we had expansions. Those were good. Expansions oh. for games. Those were great. Guaranteed good lengthy... Like, well, an expansion, that's what it is. Yeah, post-release support. That's, that's the kind of post-release support you want. Patches and full expansions on their own right. You don't want little... little tacky pieces of DLC that add oh. like 1% to the content of the game but cost like £5 or $10. Oh. Fuck that, it's cancer. Oh. What's that? You want armour for your horse in Oblivion? Pay oh my god! for this horse pack. That's the, like, the most notorious one. Yeah, no wonder. <laughs> oh. That's amazing. That's amazing. There was a time where I was thinking, wow. armour from a horse? That could actually be pretty cool, but what the hell? I need to pay entire... <laughs> P- pounds, entire units of currency for this? What the hell? That's a substantial <laughs> fraction of the original cost, and I need to pay that for fucking armour from a horse? <laughs> Fuck off. That's bullshit. It is. It is. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> yeah, DLC is just cancer. Just avoid DLC all costs, avoid pre orders all costs. It's horrible. It's fucking the game industry when you do that stuff. It's condoning that kind of bullshit. It should be. There should be like a backlash for that stuff, but instead people just casually yeah. accept it, tacitly prove of it by paying for it, and that annoys me. Yeah, it's, it's really bad. It's masochism. Fucking hell. Oh my god. I don't actually I mean, buy much DLC, like, really. Um, I don't buy any, actually, now I think about it. Like, I don't deliberately go out of my way to say, I'm going to buy this piece of DLC. It's always, like, later on when I'm wanting, like, the whole game. Mm-hmm. And I buy like the game of the year edition, which has everything. Practices like these are why I can't blame people for torrenting games. No, not at all. I think it's a good idea. Try before you buy. Mm. Like you, you can actually go and drive like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini for free if you dress up in a suit, walk in, <laughs> say, "I was, I am thinking about purchasing a vehicle. Would you like to show me around?" And then you like test drive whatever one you want for free. Of course, yeah. You know, that's the policy for buying a car, why is it not for everything else? Like, just because it's more expensive doesn't mean you don't get to... Just because games are cheaper doesn't mean you don't get to try before you buy. I think that's bullshit. You have money up front, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm buying, I'm, I'm basically taking a gamble on this game and it's, it makes no sense. It's funny because it actually helps sales in the long run. Yeah, it's like exploiting customers. Think about it, I mean, if you had a restaurant and you have samples at the front... People are going to try those, and they then they'll like decide which meal to get based on those. And th- you can actually like arrange your prices in the right way so that you raise the price of the one that's um, the most popular by like I don't know twenty pence or something. By like I don't know a little what? bit. Like see mm-hmm. if you see if you know what people like by giving them free samples of stuff. You can actually like predict what they're going to buy. So that actually helps like businesses. In the I long run, don't really follow. Like at like at a restaurant, if you've got samples of stuff, mm-hmm. like people going around giving samples, the people if it's if it's good food, right? Yeah, if it's good, that, yeah, they're that's gonna what they're gonna probably buy the whole thing. They'll get a whole meal based on it. That's yeah, what, if that's it's what good. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're actually proud of if, proud and confident of your product, then there's no reason not to offer demos, let people try before they buy that kind of thing. But we don't see that anymore. It's, it's there's less and less demos being released. Yeah, and there's been a record of bad games released this year, like horrible games, unfinished games as well. 
complete like, letdowns, disappointments. People have released a full games and because they didn't get the Kickstarter funding, it's like a black screen, like halfway through the game saying it's over, we didn't have enough funding <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding that's a real thing, I can't remember the name of the game uh, oh god, what was it? I think it was Dark Matter, that was the name of the game alright, oh my god yeah, look that up if you're interested in that yeah, that's absurd <laughs> but yeah, that actually happened Yeah, I mean, we need to move on to the next topic yeah, before the whole show becomes a massive rant <laughs> Becomes Fuck You DLC Show. Fuck You Everything We Hate Show. <laughs> that should be the name of our podcast. <laughs> right, what's next of it? Let's get this shit going. Um, what have you been playing this week? Uh, Not much. Playing anything. I would gather because you're waiting on Batfield. Yeah, that's it. Ah, uh, shit. Alright, I've been playing a lot. <laughs> hmm. um, uh, there's obviously Batman Arkham Origins, but we are stress for time right now so I'm just going to say it's on my channel uh, but there's another one, another game that I was playing um, Democracy 3 which I haven't done an LP of because it's boring to watch honestly um, it's like this game where you basically run a country and you get to decide the fate of your nation and you have to get people to vote for you so there's like a capitalist group there's like a socialist group uh, young, old, young wealthy, conservative, all, that sh- all the groups are there right and you get to like pick policies and stuff, and it's, uh, it's really fun. Like, there's one. Uh, like, you can incre- you can increase funding for science, science for example, and build like massive schools, and just completely destroy religion. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get an achievement, and it comes up with like Charles Darwin's face, and it's like what the hell? It says like you scientific utopia or something. <laughs> secular utopia. That's it. I, I created secular. a secular utopia. <laughs> Why does it have Darwin's face though? What's that got to do with it? I don't know. That's just reinforcing the whole stereotype, <laughs> cliche, bullshit, platitude thing of. But anyway, the, one of yeah. the policies is creationism versus evolution. <laughs> Holy shit! And I, uh, I, uh, if you put it, up, if you fund, uh, if you support, if you like, it comes up like the middle of the sliders, like both systems taught, and I, I just look at that and I'm like, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Or you, or you can teach creationism or evolution only and obviously I went with evolution because it's fucking true what happens <laughs> if you do the opposite and you you, you, you encourage create, you create like a 19 you can create a 1984 police state you can do that <laughs> you can, it's amazing you can get CCTV cameras you can get uh, racial discrimination uh, you can put your border controls up so there's armed guards shooting at uh, brown people <laughs> it's brilliant so yeah I created a secular utopia and then I did the opposite. Seriously, you did the opposite? <laughs> yeah, I created like a, a, a nation that believes God made them in seven days and is like a technological backwater. Six days. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, I took a day off. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Although he made, he made humans in one day. <laughs> All right. You know, the whole Bill Hicks, I believe God created me in one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one day. Uh, but yeah, the games are actually pretty good. Um, it's not getting graphics or anything. It's just like buttons and sliders and stuff. But it's it's pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like that sort of thing. This should be on um, YouTube somewhere. I want to see this. It'll it'll probably be up in the podcast right now. In fact, it will be. It'll, you'll be able to see it on the screen. Oh, cool! People watching well. Uh, but it's it's I don't know. You'd have to. It's a very I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but if I did an LP on it now, I'd probably like be able to explain everything and all that, and it'd, it'd be brilliant because I know exactly what to do to, right. to like manipulate everything. I just, oh my god, it's amazing. But yeah, um, yeah, you can basically push your country in certain ways with like political capital, which is like the points you spend mm-hmm. to change policies, like creationism versus evolution. Um, I always like right away. I always put science funding up because it says like it increases your GDP. And education and all that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, factors that you can change, a lot of variables, and yeah, they all impact one another, and it's, it's fucking nuts. Man, that game's awesome. <laughs> so we're basically reviewing games in addition to saying what we've been playing. That's, that's yeah, okay, that's what I've been playing. It's, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's okay. We can do that. Right, else? Uh, nothing else. I've just been playing Batman and Democracy 3. Um, I just been playing nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I've actually been playing nothing. Well, right. actually, I have been trying to get Zero Hour set up properly oh. so I can do a playthrough of that. I want to see that. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not amazing at it. 
I'm, I'm obviously pretty good at Command and Conquer because it's th- the first game I ever played was Red Alert, and I played I've played Command and Conquer for thousands of hours probably. Was and Red Alert your first ever game? Yeah. Oh, well, damn. first thing I ever played. Going back to the game of roots. <laughs> I was like five years old. Wow. Oh my god. Yeah. I want to see that. Yeah. I think everyone I'll, does I'll, now. I'll do it eventually, uh, but I'm, yeah. I'm not amazing at it. Like I'm, I'm probably better than the average player that's played it quite a lot. Uh, but uh, I didn't actually play play Zero Hour a lot when it came out. That was like the, the Command and Conquer that I skipped. Even like Tiberium Wars, I played a lot. That was uh, hmm. quite good at that. Uh, it was weird because I was weird when it comes to Command and Conquer. Like I played them very late on. I played them when I was like thirteen. Uh, it's shocking. Where the hell was your childhood? Yeah, I know. I was playing other games. But um, yeah, they're all they were still good. Like they were they were dated, but I enjoyed them. Tiberian Sun, I played that so late and it was amazing. Oh god, that was the first one I played. I think it's brilliant. The one with the, with the yellow walkers, Titans. Yeah, Titans. That's it. And they shoot giant yeah laser. But yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's the mammoth MK with the real gun. Oh, oh the damn. Titan just shoots a standard <laughs> like, round or something. See, look, you know all the names, and I don't. Yeah, it's, it's, I can't do that for Zero Hour, not really, but I can do it for Tiberium Sun, I can do it for Red Alert, Red Alert 2, Tiberium Wars, uh, any that I missed. Nah, every Command and Conquer after Tiberium Wars is complete fucking shit, and should just be ignored, and damnation <laughs> memory, just pretend it didn't exist, it wasn't let's, made. Let's take out base building, I'm sure they'll love that. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like playing Batman and saying, let's take out, uh, let's take out, hmm... Actually, no, bad example, move on. <laughs> I was about to say, let's take out Batman, but then he could just play as the Joker or something. That should be better. I want to play as the fucking bad guy for once. I want to fuck shit up. That's yeah, so actually, underdone yeah. in games. No, no. Why am I always the good guy? Can I, be the, can I be the Joker? Can I go around laughing hysterically and blowing shit up? I think there are games that do that, but I can't think of any right now. Is There's there any? not many. There's not many at all. Can you, th- uh, can, can you think Theft of one? Grand Theft, Theft Auto, Auto it's, you're, not, you're not forced to do that, you can be a good guy. You can stop no, at red lights and no, stuff. No one's a fucking good guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone runs around shooting everyone's head, head off. Yeah, people and beating, drive on sidewalks. And beating the guy in GTA 3, you know how the old men with the brown coats? Oh my god. Those guys oh, are yeah. pros in fist fights. Those guys are gods among men. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they're just like, hey, fuck you, man. <laughs> and they run up to you, punch you, and then you die, and they say, I'm too old for this. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> my god. Yeah, there's not enough games where you're the bad guy. Some of them attempt it, like games like Overlord, which is not actually... It's not an alright game, but it's not good. I don't know that one. It's The phrase is like, it's good to be bad and stuff. It's, it's kind of oh, cheesy. Oh, Dungeon Keeper. Yeah, the... Oh, Dungeon Keeper, yeah. It's good to be bad, that was Dungeon Keeper. Oh, is it? I thought it, Overlord might have stolen that then. Yeah, yeah Dungeon Keeper did. was 2000s. Yeah, Dungeon Keeper is a game where you get to be the bad guy. That's good. Yeah, that's that's the only one I can think of. That that's a really good example as well. Yeah. You just you quoted the the thing there. The what's it? Uh, oh, is, is it like a mononym or something? Like the 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 line phrase tagline tagline. I just go tagline. You quoted the tagline. I remembered it. I instantly thought Dungeon yeah. Keeper, and that was a good yeah. example. As an overlord, though, as well. But they yeah. obviously took it from that. When did um, that come out? It came out uh, back when the Xbox 360 was new. 2005 and, then, yeah. And then they brought a second one, which is on PC. I actually played that a bit. It's a decent game. Mm-hmm. But it's highly repetitive. Basically, you destroy the Roman army as a as a demon um, wow. who has control of like other minions. It's very Dungeon Keeper-like, except you're an actual character. Oh, okay. So it's like, being, it's like playing Dungeon Keeper, but being, uh, what's he called? The guy, Horny. Oh yeah, the Horned Reaper. Yeah, you're like that guy and you're controlling all the minions and telling them to do things. Yeah. So it's actually a decent game. Uh, But it's not like, it's not the best bad guy game because it's really cheesy and it has jokes in it and stuff. Oh, so it's not serious and great. No, it's not serious and it's not ridiculous really. Well, it's sort of ridiculous. It's hard to describe that game. It's got a lot of themes. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, How did we start talking about that? What were we Uh, on? What was... Uh, we were talking about um, uh, Command and Conquer, and then I thought I just instantly kind of thought, "Why am I not like, the bad guy in games?" Like, yeah, right. So we were we're talking about uh, yeah what, Zero Hour. I was so I may end up doing a playthrough Zero Hour soon. We've played that together. 
a couple of times, I think. Not, not me. We, no, I must have played it with someone else, yeah. Yeah, with someone else. <laughs> but the, yeah, that game is good, I actually completed that. <laughs> mm. Surprisingly. I think um, I did years ago. Yeah. Zero Hour for me was like probably the best one though. Like in terms of being a game. Mm-hmm. Like for nostalgia it's obviously Red Alert Two has like the best music probably as well. Mm-hmm. Uh Zero Hour music's not bad actually. But yeah, everything after uh what you said, Command and Conquer Three was it? Tiberium Wars? Tiberium Wars, everything after that is just shit. Yeah. I only played the demo of that, it was very average. Tiberium Wars, I thought it was pretty good. I played it on three sixty though, that may be why. So did I. Still, oh. it's just the same. It still felt like genuine, like a, a canonical part of the series, not just some ah right, some commercialized, casualized piece of shit. It's not like one is. It's you wouldn't put it above Zero Hour or Red Alert Two though. Nah, that's, that's what I mean. Red Alert Two is way above everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I can still remember the start of the game where you have uh, what's her name, Anya. Anya, Ta- oh, you better not be thinking Tanya. Tanya. Oh yes, yeah, you Tanya. better not be. Th- oh, oh my come god, on, I was one letter off. It's disgusting. I couldn't remember the name. Ah, oh, bad with names. In these Forgot games. Tanya. Fucking hell. <laughs> it's disgusting. I should be ashamed. <laughs> it's not my fault. She's your like wife or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Premier Romanov was such a boss. <laughs> Hammy acting. Oh my god, all the cutscenes, holy shit. They were amazing. I know. <laughs> the hammy, corny accent, it was brilliant. <laughs> it still, Ein- it worked though, it felt like it worked. Who, and they kill Einstein so that nukes aren't invented. And, oh no, no, Einstein goes back in time and kills Hitler. He shake, no, he doesn't kill him, he shakes his hand and it changes <laughs> the course of history. Oh shit. But Einstein shakes Hitler's hand and then Hitler doesn't become a prick. <laughs> he doesn't go all emo and like want to destroy the world because Einstein's a Jew or what? But no, it doesn't. It didn't matter back then. Back right. then, Hitler was a hippie. He was just a normal guy. <laughs> so Einstein shaked his hand and then he went the other way when he walked down the street or something. He, he, he just ah. he didn't become a fucking dictator that it, tried it. to conquer the world. Instead, what happened was the the Eastern Bloc and Western Bloc countries continued to escalate and power up, and then it just culminated in a massive world war uh, that was even bigger than World War Two. So Hitler was the good guy, technically. Eh, uh, well, you could say that about anyone that was a dick, because they could have been the... Yeah, they could have been uh, the the lesser evil. Could have been. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, the Cold War wouldn't, would have been totally different if Hitler hadn't rose to power. Yeah. Who knows what Germany would have done? <laughs> yeah. Every, everything changes, so yeah, I like that. Bioshock, Infinite, touched on that. A little bit. Is that it? Yeah, at the end, the whole parallel worlds, different choices, different things happen. Oh, yeah. The whole, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. But anyway, uh, I think we should move on, man. We're dragging yep. on. We all, yeah, we we'll always, we'll always take ages, fuck sake. It's because we always just go into topics. We can do that about any topic, just sit and talk about it forever. Yeah. All right, so what games are you looking forward to? Uh, oh, my God. I'm still waiting for Rome 2. <laughs> it's not arrived yet. I've been waiting for that game since the original Roam, and it's meant to have came out around now, but yeah, I don't, I don't see it anywhere. I'm just, I'm still waiting. Oh, I don't know. Nah. I'm sure they'll mod it. Uh, it might, it will get better, but I don't know if it will ever be what we wanted it to be. I don't think. Why it. would, why would mods spend time on a broken game? I'd be surprised at what people will do to save their franchise. That's all I'm saying. Like you will be surprised. Um, but I still don't think they'll do it. I don't think, I don't think it can be done. Really, like, I don't think it can be fixed. It's unsalvageable. Um, I think it's Fubar. totally screwed. It's you fucking Fubar. Ch- You just change almost everything. You may as well start again. God. Yeah, all these uh, modders may as well just make their own game. Yeah, like uh, Dar- the Darth Mod guy. Mm-hmm. What's his name? Nicholas. Nicholas. Yeah. 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 He made the right decision. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Holy shit! He got away from a goddamn shitstorm. He failed just in time. Imagine the amount of work you'd have to do. Like, just to fix Rome 2, holy shit. Well, you'd have to make the AI over all over again. <laughs> it's got no AI right now. If you wanted to do a conversion mod for, like, Third Age again, like, a mm. Third Age for Rome 2, there's no AI there. Why would you bother? 
obviously you could sit in the uh, model and all the units like the textures and stuff and uh yeah completely overhaul the game but if if the, the fucking orc maulers are gonna just sit and let you take the town center with your your i don't know one unit of hobbits then why bother modding the game so you can yeah fuck that i don't yeah. think anyone will really bother oh we should make it clear just to make it clear uh I, I will not be continuing any Rome two campaigns because it's I just can't play it. Uh, just to, just so it's clear, we didn't, I didn't actually say that. Like right. at the time, I don't think you did that either. Uh, you're not yeah, continuing, I'm, right? I'm different. I don't know. I, I can't oh. bother playing the game right now, but that might change. Yeah, it could change. I mean, I don't know. I, I doubt it with the games coming up. Yeah, that's that's a big part of it. The games coming up mean that there's I can't really see any reason to keep playing Rome two. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Dead Rising three mainly. So are you, of course. Yeah, we did. A, yeah. We should actually say that all, all, all you guys watching this right now, I am almost certain that you will not know that we did a playthrough of Dead Rising two, and we are actually quite proud of it. It was like one of the first yeah. things we did, but it was so good. It went oh, really I well. It. I, yeah. I actually end up watching it myself. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I'm stunned by how underappreciated it is. Like no one. I know. Just got no views. It's, I don't know if it's because Dead Rising 2 isn't popular, but holy shit, now there's Total War. And yeah. our, our Dead Rising 2 playthroughs have no views, and they're amazing. It, it couldn't be better, like, it's like pre- it's almost a perfect playthrough, like, it's like 9 point... It's like 99.99% perfect or something. And there's so many epic moments, and it was yeah. a blind playthrough, we didn't know what the hell we were doing, and we still managed to pull it off, it was so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe when Dead Rising 3 comes out and... Uh, maybe that will uh, be appreciated, and then people go back. I don't know. Mm. We but should we, say we though are. that we have bought Xbox Ones, and we will be playing Dead Rising Three and releasing it on our channels on Dave release. I don't regret anything. Dot GIF. Yeah, I don't. I don't actually either. The game looks good so far. Yeah, and it's an exclusive. That's why we bought Xbox Ones. Yeah. Otherwise, Still, we wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, we just played it on PC. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have bought Xbox Ones. <laughs> well. Here come the comments saying, "Oh, you bought Xbox One for one game." Hard, 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 hard. Yeah, which is it's pretty it's, much true. It does. Although there are a lot of titles coming up, probably. Yeah, and, and a lot of lifetime. years. Yeah, a lot of years in its life cycle. I mean, it will last at least five years. There won't be another Xbox or PS Five. <laughs> What's the generation right now? The eighth generation. I'm not sure. Depends when you start counting. <laughs> From the first generation. Do you count arcade games? No, there's it's just, there's a standardised generation oh, right. thing oh. that I'm referring to. Uh, what was the first one? I don't have a fucking clue. 16, I was born in... 16-bit? Uh, you no fucking idea. Yeah. I'm not that old. Same. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was 8-bit. Eight, eight I think that was when it officially began. It was one bit, I've, I've remembered. I try and, like... <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> one bit games. Oh my god. It's better than zero bit. <laughs> yeah, it is. Oh my god. But yeah, uh, Dead Rising 3, oh my god. <sighs> yeah, that's going to be good. I've, I'm quite excited for that. I've been waiting for that for quite a while, actually. Yeah. And then I found out that 2 existed and I was like, what? And then we played that and recorded it. <laughs> and uploaded it. Mm. Oh, man. It's so good. Oh, I want to play it now. <laughs> Fuck. I want to run around with, like, a teddy bear helmet or something and then hit people with, like, a giant dildo. <laughs> it's a kind of crazy shit you do in that game. Oh, I want to God. whack you with a giant dildo. <laughs> I did that in Dead Rising 2. Yeah, you did. You got mad. <laughs> Fucker. I think I chased you. You did. <laughs> Zombie apocalypse chasing each other. <laughs> what? Just, just, it's just funny imagining people in an actual zombie apocalypse doing that. <laughs> Buggering around. Yeah. In the midst of flesh-eating cannibals. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Hmm. So I don't think we've have we said yet that we're going to be doing a playthrough of that and uploading it. I think we have. Yeah, goddamn, yeah. Okay, let's just... I've said it again. Now let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's the... I think this is the last one I want to bring up. There's the Thief game coming up. 
Oh man! Oh, oh no. god! Oh, I'm, fuck. I'm scared. I'm scared. Oh. I fear for another fragment of my childhood, one of the few remaining ones yeah. that, are, that hasn't been sullied <laughs> by this casualised fucking garbage trend of converting games into shit that's fucking fuck. They were going to give him, uh, yeah, I linked it to you uh, a while ago, but they were going to give Garrett levels, even though he's a master thief. <sighs> and they took it out, they took it out, but it worries me that you would think that's a good idea in the first place. It really worries me. Um, what other fucked up shit are they putting in that they've not taken out? Um, I, I don't know. How do you uh, manage to think that's a good idea in the first place? I, just, I don't know. I can't conceive of how that can end up end up being good. Like The people in charge have to be morons and they're going to just fuck the game. I think they are morons, honestly. <laughs> um, See the guy that, uh, that uh, uh, pitched that when they were sitting in their office talking about the game? He should have just been slapped and chucked out the window. Yeah. <laughs> it shouldn't have been. It shouldn't have ever got to the public public knowledge that that was being considered ever they they fucked up when I'm trying to think of new ideas or something new to do I never like come out with something that retarded ever like that is just that's like saying I'm gonna buy a car but I'm I'm not gonna get tires for it or anything or something I'm gonna drive around with no tires it's it's like really retarded like anyone who's played the original thief will think that's fucking idiotic yeah they jumped the shark why, why would you... A Master Thief has to level up? What? What is that bullshit like? I mean, maybe if you made it so that he was rusty or something. Like, he, he'd been in prison for a long time or something, and then he got out and he has to become a Master Thief again. It totally devalues the whole aspect of Garrett, where he's a Master Thief, and it's up to you to do him justice with your gameplay. Yeah. Like you're, you're meant to pull off the heist perfectly, because that's what's, just, what's demanded by how awesome he is. And that's that's only how can you respect the protagonist you're playing as if he has these stupid level ups in order to become competent? It's just it pisses me off when they do that kind of thing. They don't even need the the best thing about Thief is probably the level design. Um, oh yeah, if, oh, if yeah. they fuck that up, I am. Oh, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be so mm. mad. Like yeah. I, will, I will rage so hard. Me too. I don't know if I should record the rage or not. <laughs> like, as I soon as I start blood, playing, yeah. just records. I recorded the rage for Absolution. Oh, what video was it in? Yeah, uh, all of them. <laughs> all of them, just shouting all the time. Fucking checkpoints. <laughs> Another franchise that I dearly loved, and it's now been just yeah cancerized. And that's Can't why. Think of a better word. That's why I'm worried about Total War because Hitman's fucking gone. Like the whole team was fired after that. I think. Yeah, they were fired. Because, and it wasn't even like an unprofitable game. Uh, they made a lot of money, but it didn't hit their corporate targets. So they fired <laughs> the whole team, and uh, yeah, they're not making Hitman anymore. Uh, the people who have the rights to it. I think it's who is it that owns it? Is it IO? IO Interactive. I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was them. Well, whoever it is, anyway, they they that's what happens. Um. So bye bye Hitman. Bye. Nice knowing you. Uh, that, franchise, uh, that franchise is gone. Thanks for all the fish. <laughs> I'll just slap Agent 47 in the head, fucking bald head with it. <laughs> right in the barcode. <laughs> right in the barcode. You sucked in the last game. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is what our podcasts are going to be. Just basically rants. <laughs> barely controlled her. rage. I don't want to do this. I don't want to rage at game developers. I want to be like, yeah, yeah, everything's awesome, this game's so yeah. good, I can't wait to play it, I've played that game, it's up my channel, this is all amazing, I'm so happy right now, but no, everything's just shit, kinda. I mean, like, <laughs> pushing someone off to play a game, I've not, like, I've not, like, played a game that is that good in a long time. Uh, maybe the original Dead Rising was the first one, the last one, sorry. Like, a game that you just had to play and didn't give a shit about anything else. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Pushing people off to p- play a game. It's been too long. Uh, what does that mean? No, like, it, it just means, like, I want to play the game so much that, you know, I push someone off the oh, fucking, fucking game hell. to play it. Okay, right, yeah. Which is really rare now. Um, yeah. That's what I'm getting at. Like, it's. I'm trying to remember when I last had that. I think it was actually Original Dead Rising or COD 4. COD 4 was amazing. It might have been COD 4. It's been a, at least two years anyway, <laughs> if I can't remember. 
Yeah, man. They they need to they need a game that is that just blows blows us away and we just don't stop playing it. <laughs> Something that's long, revolutionary for a long time. Yeah. Ah, oh. maybe the next generation will usher in another generation of games. Yeah, it should. That's Even what, on the PC. That yeah, happens, especially on the PC, because now all the ports are going to be, you know, not as shit, not as restricted. Yep, and it means better games, and you can do more things now. Developers can do more things. Mm-hmm. Well, for the PC anyway, at least. Yeah. Almost no, one, the... almost no one apart from indie developers make PC exclusives. Look at it this way: we've made a massive step forward. We went yeah. from 720p on the Xbox to 900p on the Xbox One. That's progress. <laughs> It only took only took eight years, was it? That's fucking amazing. I'm so oh, pleased yeah, with that. That's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's like an extra twenty pixels a year. That's why. That's the. That's one of the few reasons why I give a shit about the Steam Box because it might actually like. It might raise the bar, mm-hmm. um, if more people buy it, because then developers will think, okay, we're gonna make a PC only game, that people can play on their Steam Boxes as well. Because, see, if the Steam Box becomes a thing for normal gamers. People, console gamers, if they convert the console gamers over to get Steambox, then that will mean developers have an incentive to like you know actually make games the way they're meant to be played. Hmm. None of this like GTA Five, seven twenty p, thirty fps garbage. I'm not playing that game up like that. No, I'll wait for PC. I and think I... the Steambox could really catch on because the hardcore PC oh, gamer well. demographic would love it, and also there's the demographic of oppressed, bullied console fags that are being called <laughs> dirty console peasants by the PC <laughs> master racers. The, the hipster side of them will be like, finally I get a chance to join the PC crowds and they, they get a Steam box as well. So it, yeah. could, it could catch on for everyone. <laughs> I'd be so glad if it did. Yeah, same. That was as well. Better games. Hmm. I think that's it. That's all we're looking forward to. <laughs> yeah. That is not enough. If anyone has any ideas of any idea of any games that are coming out that are going to be good, let us know. God. To clarify, we are not looking forward to Thief. It's going to be a disaster. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah, it's probably going to be a disaster. And if you're going to get Thief, you should steal the game like the protagonist. <laughs> oh my God, you did not <laughs> just say, say that. It. Had to say it. Steal the game. The be a protagonist. <laughs> steal the game. <laughs> That's what you're going to see in, on the advert. It was a get, comment. You know, it was a comment on PC Gamer. Yeah. They're going to go with that for the trailer when it uh, goes on TV. You know, the, the the day before release ad. Be a protagonist. <laughs> steal the game. Why don't just show water arrows? It's funny because it comes out in North America before Europe. So if you live in, in Europe, then I advise you, you to absolutely pirate that game. Because of the, I hate that as well. Oh my god! Jesus why, Christ! Why do they release games in different time zones? We have an internet. What? What? We can release them all at the same time worldwide, online, di- with digital distribution. Just to be clear, we're not naive autists that don't realise the the consequences of of condoning piracy. All right. Yeah. He yeah. he just wants to go ahead and condone it anyway because of how passionate he is about it. Yeah, I don't give a shit. You should you should try before you buy. It's a consumer right. Fuck mm-hmm. fuck you, corporations. Fuck you. Yeah. If you want me to be exploited, at least let me try it first. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um, but yeah, I think we are uh, we are done. I think we've covered everything that we want to. All the main you, topics done. Unless you have anything you want to bring up. No, I think we can just go over to the Q and A. Is it? Yeah. All right. Okay. Questions. I don't think I've got any right now. No, I don't have any. It's all you. All right. In addition to questions, I've also got topics. Uh, oh. So you don't have to have a question mark at the end of what you've said in order for me, in order for me to bring it up. Yeah. And that's good because one has three hundred pounds and then a winky face. <laughs> like he's talking about. That, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah, he's talking about what I won when I finished second place in the tournament. So I, I think he it. wants to know what I'm going to do with it. You bought a chair? Yeah, I bought a chair. There you go, you got a chair. Yeah, it's it's really comfy and I can... It sucks because the reason I bought the chair was because I want to make loads of videos and if you make loads of videos, you have to sit there uh, in a sitting position for a long time so the chair can be very important. 
that can determine whether or not you have to stop because your back's getting sore and people, this chair's people really good. think sitting down is not stressful on you or anything. Um, if you've, it's fuck. If your body's in the one position for a long time, it's bad. Like it, it messes you up. You get a sore back. Uh, your legs stop working. <laughs> you know, people have died from fucking blood clots from sitting down for like fourteen hours and shit like that, playing World of Warcraft. Pulmonary embolism. Um, people fucking died from sitting down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty important that you don't like sit on a brick wall or something. So you need, yeah, you need a good chair if you're gonna be like playing games a lot or sitting down a lot in general. Yeah. So it's it's kind of the worst time for me to have forked out to get in your chair because I've not been recording anything. I just want to yeah. point out that irony. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. We've got the same chair, don't we? Yes, we do. Similar, anyway. I'm gonna uh, just lie back now uh, for the rest of this podcast. So, uh, <laughs> oh, what the oh, fuck? Fuck yeah! Oh, <laughs> that sounded like pain. Chair. Oh my god, it's my back. It's awesome. Guys, we get back over here. We're recording a podcast. <laughs> Holy shit! Right, we'll come back. Don't know what he's doing, guys. Don't know what he's doing. <laughs> back. All right, we've got him back. Okay, so that, that was the first topic. Two hundred pound. Uh, I got a chair and. I'm also, uh, I've spent some of that on the Xbox One because we we YouTubers that only have like 20,000 subscribers, we do not get a lot of money for this. It wasn't no. that long ago that it didn't even cover the running costs like the electricity and that, so it's, they always have the, the it's, it's quite common that people think that because we have YouTube channels and we can spend a lot of time doing it that we must be rich, but even oh, like... No, no. Even YouTubers that you would consider really big and successful, they do not get a lot of money for what they do. Uh, yeah. I think I, I think I can say that you, uh, without any repercussions, that YouTube takes half of what you earn on your videos. Yeah. And then your network takes a cut as well, so you get at most half or just under half of what you actually make using ads on YouTube and I should also say that ads are a very inefficient way to yeah. farm revenue very I, inefficient obviously like because uh, we have we make money from this and we are invested in our channels we uh, I had a look at the analytics and it turns out that 50% of the views uh, from YouTube videos are not um, ad, ad views which means there yeah. aren't ads on them so yeah. half of the total views that the average YouTuber gets is uh, ad blocked as far as I can tell, mm-hmm. and I don't want um, people to feel bad for using ad block when they watch my videos. I if use ad block. I use it. I use it. So if you want to watch my videos and use ad block, it will. Uh, but it will, it will deny me zero point zero 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 one pence. But I do not mind. Yeah. But I, actually, watching my videos is infinitely more valuable to me than the tiny amount of money that you would have gave me if you had ad block disabled. So by all means, if you want to watch my videos and use ad block, go ahead. I don't mind. Yeah, there is a uh, one thing that I do. Like, um, I actually whitelist people who I watch a lot, so that they get money from the ads that I just leave there. Like, I'll I'll actually open like a video of someone I'm watching, and I've got them whitelisted in ad block, which means, of course, you know, the ads aren't blocked, so they get that revenue. Mm-hmm. But then I leave that, I mute that ad, and then go to another video and watch that. Mm-hmm. So I don't actually watch the ads, but they still get the money. So it's like leaving the video loading. And you go back and pause it like thirty seconds later, so that you know the video just doesn't keep playing. And you don't have to watch that again. Yeah. But that's why I do. I don't actually watch the ads at all. I just leave them playing and then go watch another video that is actually uh, that is not whitelisted mm. <laughs> at the time. Like I don't know uh, a science video or something. Yeah. But yeah, that's why I do. Um, you can do that if you want, but uh, you don't have to. You don't have to. It's all, it's all free. Yeah. Every time someone complains, I feel like shouting at them. It's fucking free. The check bounce looks like you got what you paid for, bro. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man. Just as well the check bounce. <laughs> oh. Right. I think you answered that well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Any more? That wasn't even a question. That was just a topic. Yeah. So I, I think he got more than he bargained for when he. What oh yeah, a lot more. Holy shit! <laughs> right, are we using any mods for Rome Two? We should. No. The answer is obviously no. And should we say why? Uh, I can, maybe I'll your give, reason's different. I'll give my reason then. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of using mods on things that are unstable. Uh, I don't like to build on shaky foundations, if you will. 
Mm. Um, that's my justification. I don't want to break it any more than it is broken. Um, that what if it's a mod that's meant to fix up the cracks? Yeah. Well, there's the thing, the whole thing of uh, they're patching the game, and uh, I'll have to go out of my way to update that all the time, and I'm lazy, um, and I'd rather not use a mod, really, for an LP, for the first LP, like halfway through an LP, I don't want to start using a mod unless it's like, unless it's like really appropriate and it needs to be done because st- something's breaking. Like Rome Two runs well on my machine, um, which is rare, apparently. So uh, I, I don't want to, I don't want to change anything and have it break. Or, um, blue screen of death me, again, mm-hmm. like it used to. The patches did actually fix that to their credit. Yeah. So uh, that's my reasoning, really. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. My my reasoning is well, I, I do use mods only in the. Yeah, there's a, a there are exceptions obviously, but I don't use mods unless they don't affect gameplay. And I don't like doing. I don't like affecting the gameplay because it sort of cheapens it. If you know what I mean. There's another thing. I I don't have much confidence in a mod that was made within a few weeks. All right. As, as well, they haven't had any time to make it. They've only had like a few weeks apparently. Mm-hmm. Um. So there could be issues within the mod that they don't know about that break my game. Hmm. I like it's, playing games how yeah. they're intended by the developer. Yeah, I like but that as well. <laughs> that's why I don't use mods that affect gameplay. Because like, if you're if you're playing Skyrim, for example, and then you download a mod that gives you all these spells, even if the person that made the mod did a really really good job to make sure they were balanced, it's still it feels it's like you've typed in a cheat code and got something that wasn't meant to be there. That's how it feels to me. Yeah. But if, it, yeah. if it's like an overhaul, like Third Age, the Third Age mod, then that's that's like an entirely new game. It's not. Getting, it's, it's not the same. Getting spells in Skyrim is fine now. A year ago, two years ago, nope. They didn't have enough time to like make the mod actually good. But now there's like a mod up there that's like you know rated five stars by t- several thousands of people hmm. who have no issues with it, and I'd say it actually makes spells better. So you would download that. What if it said that after ten minutes? Uh, no, <laughs> because it's only a few, a few minutes old. That's why I would look at reviews. <laughs> Yeah, but what if the reviewers said that though? What if they said the mod was awesome, flawless, perfect, and the game was the mod was only ten minutes old? Maybe try it. If it's really <laughs> that, rated that high, maybe try it. Yeah. All right. So basically, you you just want to make sure that there's you're not taking a risk. Yeah, I'm. I'm right. not sacrificing. Uh, Gameplay. Yeah, basically, you're in time for nothing. That's why I didn't really use cheat codes back in you know the PS2. I used them for GTA to spawn a fucking tank. I never did that because it always sort of devalued the game and cheapened it for me. I did it once I completed the game or when I... I If I was doing a proper playthrough, I would never use a single cheat. Oh no, I don't use... I don't do that during a fucking mission. (laughs) Otherwise there's no point in playing the mission. Uh, But I do it just to go around rampaging, get six stars, kill people. No, even even because I I liked knowing that the stats... I used to do that sometimes. I would visit the stats and see how many people I'd ran over. (laughs) <laughs> or I'd see how many bullets I'd fired. And if I'd, like, got in a tank, a rhino or whatever, and then just, like, <laughs> bombed down the street crushing people, it sort of... Right. I would look at that stat and I would say, that's wrong. It's, it sort of makes it useless. And if it, it's, I don't know. All right, yeah. yeah <laughs> I hate okay. flaws. That's, I, don't give, I don't give a shit about that. I just want to kill people in a tank. <laughs> yeah, I can do that whenever, though. But if I'm doing a proper playthrough, then I would never do that. All right. Yeah, this was back when I was like fucking eight years old or something, and didn't know where the tank spawned. If oh, it even yeah. spawned, and the one that did spawn, that found was locked. So I was pissed, and I got the cheat codes. Yeah. So yeah, just to get a tank. So I would really... never do it if I was going to upload it to YouTube as a playthrough oh, God, an LP. No. No. And it's kind of the same thing when I was like ten years old and I didn't even and, and YouTube didn't exist. I would still sort of feel the same uh, reason not to do it. <laughs> If something but, breaks in a game, you have to spawn it back in, like in Fallout. Like when Boone drops his gun. Oh, when a glitch fucks you over and you have to yeah. compensate for it. Yeah, it's totally different. He did that to me as well. Yeah. I still, I need to do that when I continue in New Vegas. Butterfinger, Butterfinger Boone. That's <laughs> his name now. Sees Accidentally, but... <laughs> drops the best sniper in the game. <laughs> I bet you Boone's just hiding these weapons. I bet he's got a cache somewhere. <laughs> And he's just pretending he's a moron that just accidentally drops guns. <laughs> he's got a hideout and he's storing all the unique weapons. That should be a quest. 
recover Boone's cache of stolen weapons. <laughs> That'd be an amazing quest. Like, pocket <laughs> game glitches as well. Oh, this is we, why we, if we made a game, it would be amazing. <laughs> Once again, we spent ten minutes talking about something that should have took us like thirty seconds. <laughs> Hey, what? Uh, this is another one. This is going to be worse. Holy shit. What I'm do sorry. you think about the whole NSA thing? Uh, it's scary and an intrusion of everyone's privacy. Yeah. Uh, fuck the government. Fuck them in the face. <laughs> fuck them. Screw you. I don't like you. Why you take away my right to wipe my ass? <laughs> as, as George Carlin said, I don't believe anything the government tells me. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how I see it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and this whole NSA, Edward Snowden not being viewed as a hero by absolutely everyone with a brain, that pisses me off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whenever you see any any <laughs> indication brain. of any aspect of a Norwegian police state coming, you should fucking oppress that, like resist that 100%, but people don't. People don't even give a shit and it pisses me off. See, this is why Democracy 3 is interesting and really satisfying. You get to take over everything and just make a secular utopia and go to the fucking moon again. Go to Mars. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. And you get about particle accelerators and shit everywhere, man. It's, oh, it's glorious. <laughs> and everyone's, like, nice to each other. Oh. I wish I could live long enough to see all this stuff, but I don't think I, don't think I will. No. <laughs> it's, it pisses me off. Yeah, so that's what we think about NS, the whole NSA thing. It's, it's it's scary and it's frustrating. And yeah, yeah it's scary and, is the best and, word. And Xbox Connects are gonna be uh, used by the NSA to watch you when you're sleeping. Did mm. you know about that? Microsoft actually like. Do, do you know about this? Yeah, of course. I heard all, the, all right, the, yeah. the the same thing was being said about the original Xbox. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking surveillance devices in everyone's houses. This is like, the sort of like, thing that you hear like from tinfoil hours. Shocked, so. People were actually shocked at that, and I was just laughing, like, what do you expect? Yeah. Of course that's going to happen. Oh, of course! Oh, of course! <laughs> <laughs> we, need to, we need to stop these outside jokes. That was, that was a the Young Turk, Cenk Uger thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he does all the things. Uh, it just, just happens. Yeah. Uh, all right, next topic. How old are you? Uh, how old are you? Next question, yeah, how old are you? Yeah, how old are you? What? Ask first. <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's not directed at me, I ain't saying anything. I'm not asking you though, I'm asking you right now. Alright, uh, who else is I am, to that? Okay, fine, I am uh, 21 years old and 354 days. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, sorry, 364, not 54. Holy shit. Uh, birthday tomorrow, yeah. Holy shit. I- ironically. So when you watch this, yeah. it'll be Cosmic's birthday, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Happy, b- Happy birthday. Happy birthday to Cosmic. Oh, that'd be horrible to fit in. I know. Dear Cosmic Contrarian. <laughs> Sorry, that shit. Right. Hey, I'm 21, and my birthday's in oh. December. Halfway through December, so... I was born right at the end of the year. Right at the end. Right. What's your favourite game... Uh, oh my god this is that's, that's hard yeah it's hard it's a very hard question what's your favourite movie hmm do I like Scarface better than I like what sounds the Lambs I don't know it's pretty close yeah it's, it's I don't know I don't know I don't think you need to give just one answer you could if it's hard you could just say I'm trying to think of the game I've probably played the most but no I don't know. Uh, I can't give an answer, sorry. I just don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm waiting on it. I'm still waiting on it. It's not been made yet. <laughs> there, yeah, there we go. Omnidirectional treadmill with Oculus Lift. Uh, lift? Oculus what? Lift. <laughs> Oculus Lift. Do you even lift, bro? Yeah. Uh, virtual Holodeck. There's my answer. Holodeck. All right. Go. My, my answer would probably be, well, there's there's favourite game right now, and there's favourite game of all time. You could just say Red Alert 2 and be a cop-out. That, that's what it would be, though, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't uh, know, I've, I've got so many favourite games. Uh, 
Favorite. You don't know what favorite means then. I don't. Ha- I don't prefer one over the other. Really, they're all different. They really are. Like oh, one. Although th- you, there's obviously a quantity of of how much you like each one, and they can't be equal. Yeah. It's like our brains work in analog. They're not, it's not like digital, and then you can have equal values. It's like you know, you know what I mean. Yeah, I do. It's hard because whatever my favorite game is right now, I am not playing it at all. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of weird. Like, hmm. um, looking at my library now. It's alright, we can just edit this bit out. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Oh, well. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, this is hard. This is hard. I don't know. <sighs> Grand Theft Auto was pretty good. San Andreas. San Andreas, yeah, that was, that was it's, amazing. It's probably my favourite game. It has most of the things I want to do in games in it, like drive, shoot people in the head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And when it came out, it was really good. Get a, use a jetpack. Use planes. Use a jet? Yeah, you get a, a jetpack. I don't know, I didn't really use the jetpack. It was kind of a novelty thing. But I would that get into the so, Harrier all the time. But it's just like one of those things that you always want to like... Like if you're going to have a favourite game, it's got to have a fucking jetpack. Does GTA Five have that kind of no. aspect to it? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't have a jetpack. Fuck off. Does it have like a sandbox you can do whatever you want though? <laughs> yeah. Thing? Yeah, it's apparently it's pretty good, but people said the same thing about GTA 4, so I'm worried. Alright, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I was about to qualify that question and say, but the answer to that question for GTA 4 is no, just in case you're... Yeah, the, so. di- the difference between San Andreas and GTA 4 is uh, flamethrowers, jetpacks, jets... Uh, Tanks. Colours. There are colours. Colours, there are colours in the game. Uh, not, and everything's grey. Um, Characters that you actually care about. Yep, like uh, personalities. Big, Smoke. Big Smoke was my bro, man. I love that guy. Yeah, he's a bro. <laughs> I was sad when I had to kill him. Even Ryder, he's a dick, but at least he says, Don't roll the damn car up for CJ. <laughs> Buster Stream, Buster CJ. His lines were amazing. The writing uh, in San Andreas is actually really hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and also, they had a cast. They actually had people that, that were real people and not just anonymous nobodies. I don't know who voiced Nico, and I won't ever know. I don't care. No, I, I don't know who that is. No. All right, yeah, the main character GTA Four. All right, that guy. Yeah, exactly. That oh, gosh, guy yeah. with the brown coat and yeah, okay, and the giant fish eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just think he's got fish eyes. If I don't like a character, I'll just like caric- caricaturize them. If that's even a word. Caricaturize, yeah. Caricaturize. It's a word now. If it isn't already, I made it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Coined that shit. Yeah. Uh, GTA 4 was the first game that completely let me down. Yeah. Oh my god. The, the hippie. What's, what's he called? Guy in San Andreas. Oh, the truth. The, the truth. truth, yeah, truth. Oh my god. When I met that guy, he was such a beast. <laughs> he was amazing. He was so mysterious, and then yeah. he's just this worn out hippie. <laughs> oh, he knows his shit. You go into Area 51 to get a jetpack, and it's actually there. He didn't like hallucinate or anything. It's really there. Yeah, and those, those cars that were following you when you first see them, they are actually following you. He's, yeah. not just, he's not just a conspiracy theory nut job. Even though he's meant to be, look like one, he was one. It's all legit. He knows his shit. That's why he's called the truth. <laughs> See, there's thought I'd put into this game. Well, that, that was like a, a haiku or something. It fucking rhymed and everything. <laughs> oh, right, that's, that's it. Uh, that was favourite game. Yeah, yeah. All right, explain why Rome 1 is better than Rome 2. That's what we've been doing for the past two months, I think. Have you ever... <laughs> Uh, looked at a waterfall and thought, ah, oh, it looks nice. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> right. It's, uh, CC uh, is stoned right now or something. <laughs> uh, it's, um, I don't know. Uh, do, do I need to explain this, really? So that was actually uh, going somewhere? <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't believe you. When you play a game and you're in like the, the Zen mode, that's what Rome Total War is. It's oh, oh. you're at peace with yourself and you're roaming 
legionnaires as you kill the barbarians you are you are one with them there's no connection in Rome 2 there's nothing it's oh, I don't know I cannot there's no I don't want to play Rome 2 the one it I don't know how to explain it like Rome 2 War is just at the time when it came out it was just amazing in every way mm. but this is 2013 um yeah, ten years waiting on this buggy piece of shit. Fuck off. Yeah, nine years. Not fuck off to the person asked the question. Fuck off to like you know the developers. Mm. <laughs> I don't even think I'm being rude. Like I think they need some serious fucking like criticism, man. <laughs> Holy shit! It would be doing a disservice to them to pretend that their game isn't a stealing p- Stephen Pyle shit. Yeah, at least I'm being honest with them. That's like a sign of respect there, so... Yeah, <laughs> that's the only respect yeah. you can really offer them, yeah. That kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to go play it, go, go ahead. Um, but do not say to Cosmic, fucking play it. No. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm not... No. You, even if you paid me to play it, like, £50, an hour, I still wouldn't do it. Still wouldn't do it. Pay me a hundred pound an hour. Still wouldn't do it. If you've if you've never played a Total War game before and you pick up Rome Two, you could think that this is a a good game, maybe even a really good game. But if you are like us and you've played, you've you've been here since the original Shogun, like me, you've played, you experienced the awesomeness and wonder of the original Rome, uh, when it came out. You will be completely let down, disappointed by Rome Two, unless you are making a serious mis misjudgment mis. Yeah, I don't think if you cannot understand why Rome Two is bad, um, play Rome One. And yeah, you probably prefer that actually. Mm -hmm. Even Shogun Two, like that's a good midway point between Rome One and Rome Two. Shogun Two is all of the, pretty much all of what was good in Rome One, more modern. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I wanted. That is what I've, I said. I went on record before Rome 2 arrived saying what I wanted. I wanted a, a Total War game set in the extremely fertile era of uh, antiquity, Rome. And I wanted it with an updated engine, like a 2013 engine. And the game looks good. The graphics, leaving aside the bugs and stuff, the, the, gra- the game looks really good. It just plays like ass. Yeah. That's, that's all I can really say about that. Yeah, I think we did a pretty good job with that question. Uh, that's that's the last question from that lot of questions asked by that one guy. I don't He's think pretty we're, good. I don't think we're getting enough credit here for not playing that game. Like, if you go onto Social Blade and look at like my monthly views and estimated earnings, you will see that since Rome 2, I have gained five times the amount of money per month from playing and uploading that game. I'm not fucking playing it anymore. I'm choosing to <laughs> lose money to not play it. That's how fucking bad it is, okay? Oh, so a lot of your subscriber base, your viewers, are are Total War, especially Rome 2, and you're kind of (sighs) shunning that opportunity to, you know, make videos for them because you don't want to play it? Yeah, you don't just not make videos for people who want to see what videos their reasons, like... Yeah. You must... They must get it by now, like... Yeah, they get it. They must get it. Our subscribers are intelligent people. (laughs) I'm, I'm quite sure, like... I want to play Rome 2, it just doesn't exist in the state I want it to be. It's not the game I want to play. <laughs> I'm still waiting for Rome 2, that's all I can really say about that. Yeah. Uh, oh. Things, a, a topic, things they can add and fix about the game. Also, what can they add from other installments in the Total War series? I'm actually getting more angry, I don't know if anyone's noticed, the more Rome 2's brought up, the more angry I get. I'm sorry, I apologise, I'm just really pissed. Yeah, just yeah. Like, fuck. I ain't even gonna answer that. Like, <laughs> sorry. Oh God. Yes. Yeah, I'm so and mad. It, what was the question? Fuck. And it's it's not the reason you can't answer it. It's it's not just one reason. It's not because we've already talked about it during the podcast. It's also because we've we've sat and thought about it, and it's quite obvious to us. And we think it should be obvious to everyone, but it somehow isn't. Like, yeah. All all they had to do was make they had to just. We could just rattle through all the things that we miss, like the detailed trait system for characters, uh, the way combat felt satisfying. Like that, I don't think that's really been addressed. Like, have you ever in 
you, you've obviously have you've got legionary, legionaries in Rome too, and try to make a defensive line, and then yeah. try to hold against barbarians. It just doesn't work. It just looks. It mm-hmm. starts to just look absurd, and it just feels horrible. I I, I love to do that in the original Rome. Get uh, Hastati, get Principes, make a line, hold hold against the advancing enemies. See my Hastati do well, just because they're fighting in the traditional style they're meant to, just in an organized Roman line. Uh, it doesn't work in Rome too. Look, it, um, in the original Rome, when you charge guys with elephants, right? They go flying, and then your elephants stop and hit hit them, right? Hmm. Right, that's a ten-year-old game, and it was done better than in Rome too. Yeah, it was. Right, you go and compare those things if you want to know. But that's just a small. Re- that's one tiny thing. Like, I could take. I could make a five. No, I could make a six-hour video detailing everything that is wrong with that game, and give you a really like clear understanding of it. But I don't think it's worth the time to sit down for six hours just to know you don't want to play a game. I really don't. Like, I could do it. I could mm. fucking do it if I wanted to. Maybe I could, like, make it really compact and make it just an hour, but God. But everything is wrong. Like, everything is fucked. I've got an idea. Why don't we just spend a minute taking turns to list things that we want in Rome 2? That, that, even things that were in right. previous games. Yeah, let's do that. Alright. Okay, family tree. A okay. political system that actually works. A mm. diplomacy to finally be fixed and not be retarded. Mm hmm. Uh, I can't really I'm trying to think of more but those were my three big ones Shogun 2 uh, AI oh, the AI fucking hell I, I forgot about that as well <laughs> the AI in Shogun 2 was fine it was totally fine yeah the AI uh, there's more oh my god it's all it's like this big cluster of like bullshit in my head yeah <laughs> I'm having to get like a spade and try and pull it out but it's not wanting to come out because it's all sticky and <laughs> tangled <laughs> yeah it's just a big pile of fuck <laughs> <laughs> um, combat to feel satisfying like the elephant example uh, it's more satisfying in the first room to war mm, cavalry charges to be satisfying yeah oh god <laughs> I want I want units to not be redundant in, um, uh, in the original Rome every unit pretty much felt like it had a job to do and it could be used in a certain way and do well uh, yeah units to die when they are running away as well oh yeah f- uh, catching routing units um, and killing them there's more uh, the turn times to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, those have actually been fixed in a mod, which I noticed, but I only noticed it after I stopped playing. Yeah, and, and like I said about changing the gameplay in a way that developers don't intend, it, it's, it doesn't feel right. I want them to just fix their own game instead of having to rely on modders yeah. to do it. Uh, I want cities to be fixed. I want maps to be changed. For example, um, in a lot of the cities, I know it's a really minor thing, but you can just walk around and jump off a like go down jump off a small incline to get into the city instead of like attacking the wall but you can't do it there's an invisible wall blocking you, your troops and stuff so it's just it ma- it breaks immersion there's so much in this game that breaks the immersion and the game isn't made of that it's mm-hmm. just no <laughs> oh, also I want less siege battles I want more f- pitched field battles and yeah. I want it to be such that the game is balanced so that uh, generals are not extremely good compared to standard units and so that you can get decent units early on and that there's a benefit to having lots of them because I can pretty much steamroll through my Egyptian campaign using just a general and some peasants some mobs every every unit feels useless yeah. apart, apart from them and the temptation to just completely ignore l- mid tier units is too strong I'd rather save the money, the upkeep it just, the whole game feels really broken like I, could, I could actually just steamroll through the whole game just using generals the entire map there's no challenge. Oh, there's no challenge at all, no. Um, the flag bullshit is gone. Amazing. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. There's still uh, flags. Also, when when you have force march, when you use force march, you get ambushed. That's a, a very ham-handed way to fix the problem of flags being such a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's just absurd. I it's... don't know if that's a good idea. Now that I think about it, um... Ambush for force marching. Why not just regular marching? Because when you force march, you you're Sorry. marching extremely quickly. You're not scouting. You're oh just... yeah, you're not able to scout actually. Yeah. Well, I suppose that makes sense. It, it kind of does, but it's still extremely stupid. It's still, there's something wrong with it. Like I don't know what it is, but it still it feels. I don't know what the reasoning is, but I don't know yet. But it feels wrong. Like that doesn't seem right. 
it was a knee jerk reaction to the incandescent rage <laughs> that came from the fucking flags. Well, it was too late. Yeah. It's already happened. It's already fucked me over. So yeah, I know. Times, I mean. That, that as much as anything else demotivates you from playing a game when you've been totally screwed over. A lot of people know what we're talking about. We were playing um, a co-op campaign, Parthia Pontus. You were Pont- Pontus and what you did was you fought a battle, you almost won, but then the AI took a flag and even though you slaughtered the enemy army, you lost and your army was destroyed. Yeah. I knew, I knew that was going to happen. So did I. But at the start I said I don't care. I'm not letting them dictate how I play my fucking game. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play this battle as if there's not a flag there because that's what I would do if it, if the game was released the way I wanted it to be. Yeah. I'm not going to change the way I'm going to play a game because of something you put in. That's like fucking no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to so set in a flag. No. We just spent even more time uh, explaining why we're so let down by round two and that's pretty much all we've did for the past two months. It's kind of it's frustrating how it just we're just so let down. That's the only reason we're we're going on about this so much and also because people are asking us to <laughs> uh, I played this lucid campaign for um, an hour and I actually recorded it mm-hmm. uh, nothing was going wrong or anything everything was going very well I had a, I had Salamis the glass settlement um, and I was kicking Egypt's ass and then I just sort of thought this isn't fun I'm going to stop and I'm not even going to upload this but that should never happen. <laughs> that shouldn't happen when you're playing a game. I mean, it's yeah. it's a game. It's maybe fun. I don't know. It's the only like objective is for it to be fun. Uh, even even with all those new units and stuff, it's just it masks. It's I think it's it doesn't mask any of the problems. Yeah, it's like a smoke screen. It's different factions, but it's the same game. So. Mm. Yeah, different factions, but they inherit the same problems that every other faction has, and has so, had until then. A lot of the units are actually copied pastas as well. Yep. Companion cavalry are actually pasted, and they become, I don't know how you say it, a Gima or a Jima cavalry. A Jima cavalry, I think. Yeah, those are exactly the same. It's the same unit. It's just Stats are copy-pasted, it's, it's brainless. It's literally just a different name, I'm not kidding. That's, that's not a thing, it just, the, the, the units, it seems like they've tried to make it too serious and it just it becomes a joke because of how serious it is. Like the the stats for the units they're so they're so restricted. Like there's not a single unit of axemen that, on the Swaby. What the fuck is that? That was what I loved about the original oh, Rome. Yeah, I didn't even Get, notice that. Getting chosen axemen, getting barbarians, like getting berserkers, chosen axemen, chosen getting barbarian axemen. cavalry. Spear Warband. That's another thing, my units don't talk to me anymore. <laughs> Why Hello. Didn't... To be fair, when you get Ptolemaic Cavalry, Ptolemaic Cavalry, <laughs> the way they scream, that's that's the only thing I can really say about the game that's good right now. Yeah. The voice acting for some of the units is pretty good. I liked it in the original Rome, and it's kind of better in some places. I think I remark on it a few times in my playthroughs when I get like Ptolemaic Cavalry and start charging around, and the the guy screams and he sounds like he's really up for it. That sort of <laughs> that rallies me back to playing the game for another five seconds sometimes. <laughs> Alright, what this is the last question. You ready for it? Alright. What is you and CC's motivation to continue the Rome to co op campaigns? Would you rather just go back to Shogun 2 at this point? Um That's a good question actually. I don't know if he meant that or not, like I don't know if he meant the way he phrased that, but what is your motivation to continue the campaign? Uh my only motivation is getting to play with uh with you in a game that's it but uh, mm. the game's broken so there's nothing there anymore um, yeah. let's just play something else how about that <laughs> if you want to see how co-op can sort of make a shit game bearable go and watch our playthrough of Colonial Marines oh yeah <laughs> see if I was just playing that game on my own uh, I would just be sitting there thinking this is fucking abject what am I doing playing this <laughs> shitty piece of shit but because I was there with you and our friend Jin06, who doesn't upload videos anymore, he sort of tried for a while. Yeah. That made it fun. Uh, it, it was sort of a pleasant experience. Oh no, I was laughing all the way through because of how hilariously bad it was. Yeah. It was like some kind of 1980s retro like satire or something. It was it was like a satire of itself. Everyone was like, you could punch an alien, it would blow the fuck up. And you'd be like, what the fuck just happened? 
<laughs> and then I ended up running around just punching aliens, not even using the gun. Yeah. So co-op can sort of salvage uh, a yeah. bad game, but I don't think it really does in, for Rome 2, especially. We've just played Total War so much, and there's nothing... Rome 2 is a serious, slow-paced game, so even like a lot of banter and joking around, it can't... You, you no. were falling asleep in our last session of playing oh, yeah, co-op. Yeah. I like, was, were, actually. Yeah. That's what I was like in the solicited campaign towards the end, and I just thought, fuck, fuck this shit. Yeah. <laughs> So the, oh, it was a two-part question. Would you rather just go back to Shogun 2 at this point? Um, I've clocked... I don't know, I think it's 350-something hours on Shogun 2. Hmm. Um, I wouldn't mind returning to it eventually, but not right now, no. Um, I've just I've just played too much. Yeah, I'm kind of similar. I've, um, I have did everything pretty much in the game. I've tried every unit, I've tried... I've tried to... I'm I, I'm quite proud yeah. of my Takeda campaign. I think I really did a good job with it. I don't think I can really top it. I would just be reiterating. Yeah, I think once you've done something that's that good, you, you, he can't live up to the hype. Yeah. He can't make a better campaign than that. Nope. Hmm. Cavalry's like the best thing about Shogun 2 for me. Cavalry's shit in Shogun 2, but it's still better than the no, cavalry in Rome 2. It's, it's just fun. that I love using it. I love charge... Like, when you charge with light cavalry or even Yari cavalry, any type of sh- any type of sh- uh, spear cavalry in that game when you go into the back of a unit of Yari Ashigari when flanking it's just the fucking satisfying it feels satisfying it's, it's like you're just eating a big fucking tasty burger man it's <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's so good Yari Ashigari burger man <laughs> yeah there's nothing like uh, fly, uh, routing a unit of Yari using cavalry and, and having it be pulled off you can't do that in Rome 2, it doesn't, there's no... I've never really felt satisfied while playing Rome 2. No, 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 no. It just doesn't happen. It's because the rock, paper, scissors is so weak, I think, as much as anything else. I don't think that's really been talked about. Like, Part of, part of the reason Rome 2 is so unsatisfying is that the rock, paper, scissors is so incredibly weak. You don't ever get situations where you've, you've played it perfectly, you've countered every unit, and you've caused a chain route, and... It's, all you can really do is charge cavalry at peasants and watch the entire army break. That's that's most of my battles in Rome 2, and it's crap. Yeah. It's interesting that they went back and made Rome 2, though, at all. Like, I mean, a lot of people wanted Rome 2, but I was, they could they could have made a totally different game if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. Why not just make a game called Total War, Total War and have like every era available? Like a super game? Because then it'd be diluted. And then it'd be like it'd be like Civ. Ah, uh, yeah, I suppose. Actually, a big, yeah. a big, absurd, retarded scenario. Whereas if they focus on one era, it's easier to make a better game. Or at least you'd yeah, think they, it would be. Oh. They can <laughs> fill it in. Yeah. <laughs> oh Jesus. Yeah, that you'd have to zoom out so much that there wouldn't be any sway in Arverna. There would just be. There would there might not even be you know, a Germanic, a Franco-Germanic tribe. There would just be a yeah. Europe or something. <laughs> well, there's a... The, the user interface, I, uh, we totally forgot I mentioned that. That's, I was like, I was about to bring up at one point, but I thought we've already talked Jesus. about it like shit. That was an yeah. entire topic, I think. I'm just saying it's... Well, that's, it's, it's fucked, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, the interface is so bad. Just watch our videos and you'll see how bad it is. Just play the fucking game. Try to find out what someone's got in, a, in their settlement, an enemy faction has in their settlement. Try to find out. Go ahead. Try and cool. plan ahead with your generals what you want to give them. <laughs> Try that. You can you can do it with legions, kind of, because it has them all, all there. But generals, nope. <laughs> what was what was that one I got stuck on? Try try and find out what the food surplus is for a town. Go ahead, see how long it takes you if you've never done it before. It's oh so god, unintuitive. Oh god, where is it? <sighs> yes. Is it in the settlement detail panel and then? Oh god! Such and then a you hover over the bar, and then it says growth. And that's what it is, or something like that. Oh, God. See, I can't even remember how to do that. I've played the game for 200 plus hours. <laughs> Fucking horrible UI. Absolutely dreadful. Yeah, I can just shoot through the menus in Shogun 2. It's so good. It's all perfectly done. But in Rome 2, it's like, where the fuck do I go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's it then, I think. That's the last question. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. How long was that? That was... 
An hour and a half. <laughs> what the fuck? fuck? <laughs> that's the longest yet. That's like a full. That's like a feature length movie. That's how long that takes. Fun. Well, if you manage to last that long, you deserve a medal. Really? Yeah. Alright. Shit. What? I, I, I misunderstood there. I thought you were going to give me a medal. Nah, you don't get a shit. <laughs> Fuck you. Come on, man. You should be you should be punished for letting your episode go on for this long. <laughs> not done one in a month, so it's actually kind of short. Yeah, that's, that's so true, actually, yeah. This was maybe a weekly thing, so... Man, we're going to try and stick to that in future, I think. <laughs> try? Yeah, try. Uh, yeah, that's the end. Uh, anything Wait, else to say? Daisy now? Standalone. Daisy Standalone. Oh, Daisy Standalone. Daisy oh, standalone. shit. Holy shit. How did we forget that? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we, we did Daisy. We're, I'm still making videos public that, I, that I've taken months to upload. And it's... We really liked Daisy, and we're going to try and do the standalone when it comes out. So that's something we forgot to mention when we're talking about games we're looking forward to. Yeah, man. There we totally, go. Totally standalone. Really Look out for the standalone when it comes out. Might come out in a week. Yeah, just, could. just, just soon, mate. Yeah, that's what reminded me. Like, that's because I, th- I knew it was. I just my my mind wandered over to it for a second, then I just remembered. We should have said that. All right, that's it. All right, yeah, that's a wrap. Right. Yep. Close your episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll get the lead. Okay. Uh, Alright, got it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, uh, thank you for watching and, uh, yeah. Well, good, listening. Good, well, listening and watching. There's, like, shit on the screen. There is. All the way through. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, goodbye and, uh, hopefully you understand why we're not playing Room 2. No, yeah. If you don't, you're fucked, I'm sorry. Right, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>